Xavier, Xavier, Xavier. Hi, hi G, <laughs> the one and only. Thanks for coming on the podcast, man. Thank you. Welcome to the studio corner. Yeah, of course. It's literally in the corner. Yeah, anytime, anytime. How are you, man? Uh, 2019, so far, has not been not been good to me. Why? Uh, <laughs> first weekend of 2019, I got into a car accident, and then two days later, some little kid from uh, that my brother was having over... He's had hit a little, little kickback, and some little kid that I didn't know stole my wallet. What? Yeah, and then I. Well, hold on, hold on. How little is this kid? Cause how tall you, are you? I'm six two. You're six two, and you're yeah. beefy, dude. Like, yeah. Did you track this kid down and just? I look try at him? to get. To, I try to like ask around, like, who the fuck took my wallet from my house? <laughs> yeah, it was uh, so embarrassing. Just did he like, bring? Did he give it back? No, I don't know who took it. I still don't know. He's at large. But you're convinced it's him. I don't know who it was. I really don't know. But I think I have an idea. I don't want to throw any names. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I have an idea who it is. So we need to go house to house. Yeah, to, we're gonna for we're gonna little go. children <laughs> <laughs> for these juniors and sophomores. And... Oh man, he's that old, huh? Yeah, Dylan's. Yeah, my brother is a junior, seventeen years old. How old are you now? I'm 28. 28 and <laughs> rocking and rolling. Yeah. Still living at home, whatever. That's cool. Hey, dude. That's how it works. We're musicians. <laughs> I know. Right? I know, man. I know. <laughs> Let's not make that the excuse for our lives, <laughs> but, you know, we, we're, we're working. Yeah, I'm working on it. Come on, guys. I'm working on it. So you had a show last night. I had a show last night in Santa Monica. And you had a show a few days before that that I attended, yeah. which was incredible. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, with your band, Mr. Call. Mr. Call. I'm. Ca- you know what? We're... I'm excited to have your band on here. I'm very excited. I think it's going to be really cool, yeah. but I can't wait for that. So you're going to have to tell me, how did you come up with Mr. Call? Um, the original idea was, okay, so once we fired our old guitarist, Martin, we were going to switch the whole brand of the band anyway. And we are coming up with names. And some of these names that we were coming up with, they were cool, but they didn't really make any sense or they didn't have any meaning behind it. And uh, we're kind of thinking of play on words. And so there's this band called Sir Sly. But if you piece it together, it's like seriously. And originally, oh, Mr. I, I just put that yeah, together. Yeah, right? Wow, I, I, I yeah. never noticed that. Wow, okay. So Mr. Call was um, actually my singer's wife's idea. She said, what about Mr. Call? And then Joe, my singer, kind of played around with it. But it became more of a, instead of like Mr. Call, it became more of like a, we're one person now making music yeah. and we all kind of went with it. We liked it and it's kind of marketable. So, you know, it's very marketable. Yeah, it is. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Call. I like that kind of taking uh, the idea of one person as yeah. you guys are a unit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, That's badass. Like Captain Planet. Captain Planet. <laughs> I did another podcast where I said Captain America and my whole band just ragged on me. <laughs> was, I made a mistake. Was Captain like, America. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being Captain America. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. <laughs> well, I hope they come to terms with your genius then. <laughs> well, now it's now we have a new uh, new lineup. So you know, yeah. been through some through some stuff. That's part of being in a band. Yeah, yeah. man. So tell me about your show. Um, which one? The first one. Well, I was at the at the one at the at Azars. Yeah, Azars. <laughs> first bar. of all, uh, not trying to bag, uh, bag on Azars, but the sound is awful. At Azars, you but, guys pulled it off pretty. Yeah, good. it's it's fun. Um, we we went over a set list, and the funny thing is, like the f- second song, I don't think I've ever heard Joe mess up ever on any Joe's uh, the, singer, the yeah, singer. Yeah, yeah. But he messed up, and you know what? I messed up, and we all sounded super sloppy. And after the show, we're just like, "Oh my god, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah." Damn, yeah. I, I didn't I didn't pick up on it. Yeah. You know what the issue was is Joe's vocals were very very quiet. Yeah, yeah, but and mine were so hot. I was dying. Oh my I was god, dying. Mine I was were so la- hot. I was laughing so hard because <laughs> you know you're not the front man. Right? Yeah, I know. But I know. Uh, your vocals were super loud, and you like it came out of nowhere. You're up there, you're playing bass, and Joe. I mean, Joe is such a great front man. I, I know. love him. I know. He's like, so every cool. time I go to your shows, I'm just like, man, that guy understands what it takes to be a showman. Yeah, totally. and his voice is incredible. I mean, yeah, fucking cherry on top of the cake, right? Yeah. And 
And so I'm always like super focused when he's singing. Like he really draws on the crowd, really puts it together. But his vocals were so quiet. And then you sang, <laughs> and literally out of like the right speaker, I'm like, whoa, what was that? Who is that? Who is that? Big brown old guy? lengthy uh, Xavier on his bass. Who's that brown guy? <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah. I mean, but uh, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a hell of a show. You guys had some yeah. new songs, some Thank really you. cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so you guys, you know, had that show, and then you played in Santa Monica we at Trip Bar last night at Trip. Yeah, it awesome. was. Um, that was way better of a show, I think. My vocals were turned down, so that's good. Go. Way down. That's a great bar. Uh, yeah, yeah. Trip, yeah. I didn't. It's, it's I, so I mean, fun. I played that one show with you guys. I opened up for you yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. That and, was a fun night. Uh, I got there and I was like, "This is totally divey. There's yeah. guitars on the wall. Like, it was super cool, spacious, small stage. Honestly, one of the most fun times I've ever had on stage. Dude, right? It's just a lot of fun. I there. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's the vibe in there. They yeah. just kill it, and the sound is really good. Yeah, it is. It is. Never expected in L.A. And and um. I think, I don't know if this was me, but like I was having issues with um, the speaker. By the way, I think my head, my bass head is gone. I, th I think I left it at Azar's. And oh I think, my god! Yeah, yeah, 2019. Not, not too, uh, not too hot with me. You know, I, I want to feel for you, but who the hell leaves their like? Yeah, anything? I know, I know. It's your, it's, and it's not even like you guys are doing your whole rig, like building a stage. All you gotta do is bring your bass and your amp, right? It was, I brought my bass, my head, and like my little bag that has like my tuner and my, my pedals. And when I, when we were done with that show at Azar's, I packed up my stuff and I was like, here, Dylan, to my brother, here, you know, like take everything. And like, I think I just completely forgot because, you know, I had been drinking. It was my birthday and I was, uh, yeah, I remember <laughs> and, I bought uh, you, uh, I bought you a beer on yeah, stage. Yeah, that's right. I was like, I was you said it like four times. <laughs> I said there. it four times because nobody, I was like, Hey, can I get a beer? But by the way, nobody, everyone was just looking at me. You're the only one was who was just like. What do you want, man? <laughs> I'm like, geez, of course. Well, there was there was like a hundred people in that bar, <laughs> and, and they were all listening. They're just like, yeah. What, what? <laughs> I've never seen so many people try to get out of not buying someone here. <laughs> that might have been a world record. Yeah, yeah. I, I said it four times. <laughs> <laughs> so, so walk walk me through. I mean, obviously, there's the whole band, and yeah. then there's you. Walk me through getting ready for a show. Like, how do you prep? Uh, as a bass player, as backup vocals. I mean, what, what's your prep from like the Honest, time, honestly, time to book you show till you play the show? Yeah, we we rehearse every Tuesday and Thursday in Santa Monica. We have this little uh, lockout space now. And whenever we rehearse, I'm actually the worst singer out of the entire group. Um, so <laughs> we ha they have issues with me because I'm never... I'm close to the pitch, but I'm never always. I'm you never got a always. lot better. I heard you. Already. You got a lot better. <laughs> maybe maybe it was just that night. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I'm close usually. But uh, I have to work myself. I have to work on vocals and and timing on bass. I'm always very in front of the. I, I either I speed it up, and if they tell me, "Hey, you're you're too fast on the beat." then I'll really bring it down and then I'm too slow. So like I'm in a constant battle with myself because I'm not good. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, let's be honest, the foundation of anything is, is bass and drums. Yeah. But I will say this. I mean, obviously I've only have my experience through seeing you guys play the other night. Um, it felt like everyone was on point except for the drums. felt like the drummer was lagging. Yeah. I, was, I, uh... I wouldn't say you were uh, speeding up. I think you guys were at the right energy. I think yeah. it, it was the other way around on stage. There's some stuff where uh, it wasn't in sync, especially with uh, our song Ghost. Yeah. Um, we messed it up on Wednesday. And then again last night, everything was just uh, way off from the track. It's a brand new song, right? Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. That's why we do these shows. Yeah, I know. I know. We got to get those reps in. But um, yeah, I'd say we rehearse at our lockout and we try to get it as tight as we can. Joe is very particular and like being super anal about everything. Yeah. Gets on Lyle, our guitarist's case, Tyler, our drummer's case, gets on mine because I suck at singing. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to hear those words out of your mouth again. <laughs> all right. Yeah. You're yeah, out there. Yeah. Fucking I'm trying. It. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Reach over this damn table and hit your big ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, damn. I mean, so, that's very so strange. skill and techniques not really not really the biggest concern for you. It's vocals and you know timing. Yeah, yeah. Um, on stage, what do you feel your job is the most? I I just have to be focused and uh, like I had used to have this problem where I would um, look very uncomfortable 
on stage like almost too serious like I was not happy to be there but really I'm just like I don't want to mess this up so (laughs) (laughs) I'm not doing anything so I had to kind of switch that up and jump around and have a little bit more fun loosen up a little yeah a little bit yeah beer helps well you're the biggest dude on stage too so like if you're up there like super stoic and super serious like it doesn't matter how much everyone jumps around like kind of looks weird it's like there's that dude yeah like why is that guy looking (laughs) different from the rest of the band plus i mean even as as someone that performs on stage and as someone that watches shows and you know i'm a musician and do all that stuff i think uh there's something to be said for watching someone almost overly express how much they love what they're doing right especially on stage because it's you know i'm a strong believer in uh staying sensitive and vulnerable when you're writing and being creative right i'm a strong believer in really digging deep and expressing what you you know want to express i'm also a strong believer in work ethic and what it takes to stand up on stage because when you stand up on stage you're not just saying like hey thanks for coming out but you're saying what i have is worthy to share yeah so i want to see you master what you're doing so you can enjoy yourself. Because if you're not enjoying yourself, I'm not going to enjoy myself. I don't care how good you right. are. Unless yeah. I'm there like at a clinic to watch some guy shred faster than anyone on right, the planet. Right. But, right. I mean, it's it's like there's a time and place for practice. There's a time and place for creativity. There's a time and place for all that stuff. But when you step on stage, your job is to entertain. Yeah. And, yeah. I, you know, for me, my, my mindset going on to stage uh, when I play my songs is like, you know, if I haven't mastered them up until this point, there's no mastering anymore. Right. Like, I, I have to be ready. And when I go on stage, I have to, I, my mindset is I'm listening to these songs just as much as the audience is. These are not my songs. These are, I'm, I'm no one special. I'm nothing special. All that's happening is music is being heard, right. and I'm with the audience here listening to that music. So if I don't like what I'm listening to, then there's a problem. Yeah. So that yeah, kind of forces that. you into that place of, you know, don't fuck up. You know, yeah. shit will practice harder, and right. like, you just keep getting better. Yeah. And it's that, you know, it's almost a confidence boost by the end of it because it's – it's like hit it or quit it, you know, right. just, you know, right. fly, fight or flight on stage. I, love I know, it. I know. And not, but, uh, yeah. not, not everybody's going to love what you play, but like, I mean, that's how it is. You yeah. Know? Stand by what you do. Yeah. You know, I, I say that all the time. Stand by what you do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, entertain and be there just as much as the people listening to the music. You yeah. Because you're one of them. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, how often are you looking to play shows now yourself? Well, I think I think the last this last year I did that. Uh, it was like once a month, twice a month shows. I was playing the House of Blues, the bigger stages, and I got I got booked at a really a lot of really cool gigs, um, and it was fun. I think my issue was I've been doing the LA circuit and doing mm-hmm. a lot of shows so much, and it's just me right now. So it's kind of hard to, you know, uh, book bigger shows because you know. Uh, a lot of the bars, a lot of venues only want bands. Yeah. But I was working with that company, yeah. and you know, I started off at the beginning of last year, and I opened up for the shows because it was a whole night of music, a whole night of bands, and I was honored. It was great. I got to play cool venues, but I also proved that you know I can draw a bigger crowd, and I yeah. put on more of a show because you know, there's a lot of people trying to make it out there. But if you walk, set up on stage, and your music isn't good, and you're just like fucking dead fish, no one cares. People, are, the night's gonna die down, the yeah. vibes gonna die down, and I. You know, I I did a better job at that. Yes, yeah, dude. I, I take pride in that. Are you kidding me? Of course. Like, have you you've seen yourself play? Of course. <laughs> I appreciate like, that. yeah, dude. Oh my god, I remember where you were playing at House of Blues one night, and you just like killed it, fucking killed it. And then the next dude that came on, I was just like, it's <laughs> being so critical. Like he sucks. Like his electric guitar is just awful. And just <laughs> well, see that, and that's what that's why I kind of I I stopped working with them because I told them like, look, I you know I'm bringing the crowds. I'm putting on a show. Yeah. You know, I understand that because I'm an acoustic act, you don't want me to go later in the night, but I'm putting on a bigger show than your full bands are. I'm bringing right. more people than your full bands are. And I told them I want a better spot. I want a later spot in the evening. I want, you know, a little bit more because they were a pay to play as, as, you know, as supportive and kind as they were. Because they were. They were great people to work right. with. They were very supportive of the music. It was still pay to play. I still yeah. had to sell tickets. Yeah. And I still had to get people down there. I hate that. And, you know, and that's, that's a huge part of the business, of course. But yeah. it's also like if I'm spending, you know, if I don't sell those tickets, I have to, I have to pay to play. You, yeah, you still have you to know, pay. You it's like, <laughs> if, if say I don't sell a single ticket, you, you know. You still that, owe them like 300 Why? Well, it means just... I, I pay them three to $400 yeah. to play 30-minute set at yeah. like, you know, 7 o'clock. Yeah. 
you know, and, and that's just, it's not worth it to me because before them I was booking shows on my own and, you know, maybe it wasn't as, you know, massive size-wise venues, but they were good venues mm -hmm. and I was bringing the crowd, still enjoying myself. Some of them even paid me shit. Are you kidding? My first show at the Baked Potato, I think I got paid like 300 bucks. Hell yeah. They gave me a percentage of the door and I was like, fuck yeah, <laughs> I want to come back here and bring more people. I want to yeah. bring you business, yeah. you know? Yeah. So right now I think uh, I'm diving more into the studio. I'm diving more into this podcast cool. because, you know, I'm just super stoked to... I was funny. I was talking about this last uh, last week on the podcast with uh, with Charlie Lynn, my guitar teacher. Yeah, uh, I was talking about how great and exciting it is because I have so many musician friends that I don't see very often, and so many people in the industry. And it's there's not really a platform to like sit down and talk about this stuff and really get the honest opinions. Right. So like now it's I'm forcing you guys to sit yeah. down and tell me stuff. Yeah, totally. And so that's you know that's why you know when I when I got to, when I thought about you I was like man here's a guy that has. Close in age, is young, is trying to make it in a great indie band. You know, they haven't made it fully yet, but they're making huge strides. You know, someone that's in the thick of it all. Yeah. And, like, that's the perspective. That's one of the perspectives that is so juicy and so such a foundation yeah. to what, you know, uh, what I'm going for here. You know. So live shows is a little bit out of the question, but uh, at least right now, it'll, it'll always come. It's my favorite place in the whole world on stage. But right now, <laughs> the podcast, getting to know more musicians, getting the community bigger, you know, that's really the purpose, to get this community bigger yeah. um, and record my own music and get it out there you know, yeah, like man. everyone else I'm, I'm with that plan i love Fuck it yeah i love it I, a lot of people might not know this <clears throat> on this excuse me uh i'm about to say it though <laughs> the only reason i'd say that i'm here or in mr call or musically inclined is because of you i you know you'd know that like but i'm <laughs> letting the people of the podcast know it's because of hyg because uh, back in the day, uh, how many years ago, you'd say? I think I was like 18 or 19 when, yeah. when you you were working the front desk was, at the gym. I, yeah, I was working the front desk at the gym. I was all into fitness and like my body and whatever. <laughs> and then you would you were come a big in. Boy. Yeah, yeah, I was. You would come in just like with this guitar tattoo on your shoulder, and I'm just like, who is this guy? I like, I want to know what he's about. So I like, I would kind of just say what's up to you, and then eventually, like, I was like, okay, well, you play guitar, and you're like, yeah, I play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm thinking, all right, this guy's like, whatever. All right. So then I come to your pad and we just start jamming and you're like the most insane <laughs> guitar player I've ever met in my life. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I've never, cause like people, the, people in Newberry Park can't play like you at all, at all, at all. So like that kind of just started morphing me and then we would hang out and like smoke hookah. And we, at this point, this is where I'm deciding, do I want to be a police officer or not? Like... Like, I don't think I, I told you how, like... In I don't, yeah, I don't remember that. No, yeah, I don't think I told you how serious I was about that. I was trying to be a police officer, but, like, but jamming with you was just, like, inspiring me to, like, like man, I really want to play music, but, wow. like, I don't know how to go about this. And then you just, like, were just, like, dude, you just got to do it. You got to, like, it was just, it wasn't fake motivational shit. It was, like, you were so real with me and, like... Like, you got to put in the work and you got to do this. And, like, it was just many nights of that. And it, like, honestly, it, that helped me. And I'm just like, he's right. And the next fucking thing I did, I just signed up for bass lessons again. I remember that. Yeah. I remember telling you, I was like, dude, just go get a bass teacher. And yeah. you, I think you called me, like, the next day. <laughs> yeah, like, You're like, I'm going to my first bass lesson right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, I'm like, I told him <laughs> to tell me I want to learn everything on the bass. And that's how I, like, it just kept going from there. And, like, just a lot of trial and error. But, dude, like. Seriously, if it wasn't for you and me and you jamming, then I probably would have just gone the route of uh, like police force and like police academy, so, academy, academy, <laughs> academy bullshit. Uh, and like, yeah, I, I seriously have to thank you because like I'm in like such a great project right now, and uh, you know we've been through a lot, but I've got like the best team and the best people that I that I want to work with, uh, like Lyle and Tyler, the newish guys, like yeah everybody together is just like we all make fun of each other they make fun of me mostly but we I all make <laughs> I, I can totally see that <laughs> but we all make fun of each other and at the end of the day it's just like we still are going to get our work done and we're still going to push for the next thing uh tyler has actually been really like adamant on like photos video nice. and 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 lyle's been like really good on social media and just like just it's been great man like so far like this this new package of mr call it's four people now and that's how it's yeah, gonna be i like it's that. Just, yeah it's just it's less drama with anybody um easier schedules to set and yeah like 
like like I said, people of the podcast listening, I thank Hyke for all my success <laughs> and for all my upcoming success. Oh my you'll god, see, you're you'll ridiculous. see. Ridiculous. 2019, it has been a little rough, but but I just think of Hyke and it, and it's a uh, next level for me. So so just well, let everyone that know. That is an honor. I mean, it's an honor. That's this is incredibly kind of you, and you know, I think. I think at the end of the day to inspire each other, to remind each other why we do it and push for something greater. Cause music really is something that's untouchable. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what goes on in the world. It doesn't matter how you're feeling. Even music is a physical vibration that we, you know, can scientifically show. Right. But when it physically hits our body, it's untouchable. Yeah. Like you can, you can look at a piece of art and, or someone can tell you this piece of art is great your right. whole life and you can look at it and you'll believe it or whatever. Right. But the entire world could hate one piece of music and you could listen to it and you could love it and there's no denying it. Yeah. You can tell the world you hate it, but you physically feel that. And yeah. that right there, that's you know, that's why that's why we fight for it. That's why we yeah. push for that's it. That's why we write songs, man. And you know, just to just to have the impact that you claim that I've had is is uh, is worth it all. I mean, I've lived a full life already. Yeah. Knowing that one event has happened, and the same way I've been inspired by others. The way, yeah. same way, you know, I I may have pushed you in that time, but you know, I've struggled with myself with writing or even recording, and getting my stuff out there, and pushing to say, hey, this is what I'm gonna do for my life. Right. And seeing someone like you, knowing you from the gym days, right. and to see you standing on stage with a full functioning band, writing great music, not just good, but great music, impactful music, and doing what I believe in and what we believe in, right. that in itself is motivating because that's, that's proof. You're living proof that it happens. Yeah. It's still a lie. That music is not dead. Yeah. The, I don't care. You can say whatever you want about the industry. You either get up and do it or you don't, and that's it. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, it's, I mean... It, it works both ways, and that's why you know the community of musicians is so important. Um, but I want to back up to you starting. I, li- yeah. I, li- I like I like where that was going. I appreciate all the kind words. Dude, I mean, it, wow! I mean, it's, it's like it's because you're such a great friend too. Like you don't bullshit, and like I really I don't like have that. time. <laughs> Hi doesn't have time. <laughs> I don't have time to bullshit. Especially with music. Yeah, I you know. Can't bullshit music. I, you can't. It's pure. It's ruthless. It'll rip yeah. your fucking nuts off and put them in your mouth. I mean, <laughs> that is what music is. <laughs> like, there's no, there's. You have to be relentless because itself yeah. is relentless. If I you know. want love and passion that pure and that powerful, you've got to be relentless and you've got to be able to take it. You know, so I mean, there is no time for bullshit. And the more you bullshit, the farther you get from it. I don't care how good you are. Yeah. I don't care how motivated you are. I don't care how whatever you are. You you fucking bullshit. You're done. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> so going from being a front desk worker at the gym, at right. Gold Gym, Gold right. Gym Thousand Oaks, Gold Gym, <laughs> <laughs> and deciding you want to play bass, and yeah. you were all, like you said, you're in a you're in a you're kind of at a crossroads. Am I going to be a cop? Am I going right. to be a bass player? Um, so you made the choice, I'm going to pursue bass. Right. You make this choice, yeah. cops out of the way, uh-huh. uh, and now you know like that's your career. Right. That's going to be your that's career. That's what I'm working You're not for, making money off of it right. in that moment right. you know, at the time, but that's your career choice. So like, what parts of your life changed, like career, friends, priorities? Like, what, walk me through like, the, the I, first I like, year of I feel like that. my attitude changed, and it's still changing now. I'll explain that in a little bit, but like <laughs> – it changed from like okay so now i'm becoming from this stern person like i like mentally check myself like this is i'm gonna start like like it's it's kind of sounds kind of weird but like following the law and like living by that law and like whatever you know but then it changed from like oh now i'm gonna uh play music i have to be free (laughs) and now i'm just like what do i do and like so i would look at friends bands and like like the styles and stuff, like when I would see the neighborhood, they looked like a bunch of greasers when they first started. And I was like, that's cool. But like, then I, I saw my friend's band, Honey, and they dressed kind of like... Isn't Kevin Grimmett in that? Yeah. I remember Kevin. Yeah. I'm, he's I a, knew he, Kevin yeah. when he was 11 years he, old. He I plays flew, bass for them now. I yeah. flew to London to watch him and his band Jetstream with Garrett Zeal. No shit. Compete in Worldwide Battle of the Bands. He was 11 years old. That's Damn, crazy. I'm happy he's still playing. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, he's, he's uh, signed with Honey. Um, he was their key player, but now he plays bass because the bass player, uh, I think, dipped out. So, yeah, I would look at them, and I'm like, holy shit. They dress like – like, just they throw whatever on. They go to Salvation Army, and then they look cool, and they make great music, like like indie rock shit. And so like, the image had a lot to do the, with it. Yeah, the you. image for me was just like, that's what I want to impersonate. So I, like, for whatever reason, just tried my best to, like, mimic that. 
and I'm just like, this is how I'm gonna make music, and like, I don't know, it was just all, it's all fucked up. I had no plan. I'm just like, well, see, a lot of people would would uh, would fight you on that. Yeah, I think, and I, I'm, you know, I'd props to you. I respect you for saying that as confidently as you did, because a lot of people say that image gets in the way, and like to go after an image means right. to go after bullshit. But yeah. let's be real. If you learn a cover song, if you want to sit down and listen to Led Zeppelin and learn their song. Great, you're mimicking Led Zeppelin, but Great. you're learning something out of it. You're yeah. discovering something new. Yeah. And if that's what it takes to discover something new, I mean, fucking commit. Who yeah. cares what everyone else says? That's true. I like that. And that's when I started going on Craigslist and just, like, looking for, like, people to just jam with. To like, I'm like, I have all these songs that I've started writing on my acoustic guitar, and I want to show whoever, <laughs> like, like I'm, not the, I, I'm not good at singing. Um, and I just, but I have these song ideas, so, like, maybe I can get a singer and like, I just had all these ideas Fucking and like I, I went out, I went on Craigslist, dude, I was just on there for months and months and months. Just like looking, looking. <laughs> I went to sushi today. Uh -huh. I had lunch. Yeah. I was eating Le love sushi and thousand Oaks. Yeah. And I mentioned your name to my girlfriend. I was sitting down Yeah. and the waiter says, are you talking about Xavier Valdez? He's one of your Craigslist guys. I met him today. I swear on my life. Craigslist guy. He what said he went to, uh, I'm sorry. No, no, not a Craigslist guy. He said he went to high school with you. You were a grade above him and he tried out for like some band a long time ago. What's his name? Tyler? His name's Manny. Manny. Oh yeah, dude. He That's tried a small out. world. I, he, I just, you said that. I was like, dude, how did I, I read that guy today. Yeah, he tried out for <laughs> Silver Pup. Honestly, when we were looking for singers. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Small world. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to stop. No, just, no worries. I no. felt like there's, there's just, that was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah, that's interesting, <laughs> man. Uh, okay, so I went on Craigslist, and finally I found these dudes, just the shittiest ad that you can kind of find. It's just like a uh, guitarist or drums and guitar looking for funky bass player or whatever <laughs> i like right, i answered it i would drove to woodland hills and it was actually my old bandmates tyler and martin i'm not i'm sorry austin and martin uh uh martin's from belgium but he flew out to la to make music austin's from arizona but he moved to california i don't think to make music but he's just a drummer <laughs> you know in general and we started writing songs and that's when that whole process started. We needed a, a singer because I was singing for the band and I was god awful. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I still don't really like I'm not a, I'm not a singer. Like I said, I do backups. I can do that kind of. Hey, okay. I thought you sounded great. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> but my mic was too hot that night. So whatever. So, so, no. so hot mics for hot people, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's when the whole singer thing started. And we eventually after like 14 people that we tried out, we found Joe and that's kind of how the whole thing like started going yeah. and we formed a band and we started the all the our original songs were just mine that we were incorporating and Joe was singing them and he brought like i think a couple but it mainly was just me Austin and Martin that had all this material and Joe yeah. was just singing over it and that's how we kind of just like still with no no real plan but once Joe came in Everything started changing. Like he wanted structure. He wanted like he he, he was a leader. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he, he you was, know, he's. He, I mean, I. Yeah, that, that's a really it's really incredible to watch. Yeah, not only is he that incredible front man, not only is he incredibly talented singing, but he is a leader. Yeah, you know, I, when I sat down with you guys that night at that rehearsal, you know, I I could it was it was really it wasn't hard to determine how the band functioned. Right, and that's important. Yeah, if if someone that's never hung out with you guys can sit down and figure out like, hey. This is how they work. I yeah. think that's a great thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's always led that way. And when he started switching up my songs, and at first I was just like, really just like, what is he doing? These like, are my well, songs. These are my, my songs. You're, you're supposed to sing them this way. And like, <laughs> I was so butthurt about the whole thing. But like, now it's, I'm just so not that. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, this shit could be awesome. This, yeah. I'm like, why doesn't he do it like why isn't he Joe now? Like, like, dude, so you, you learned a valuable lesson in collaboration. Yeah, which yeah. honestly, I that's a, that is that's one of the hardest things to learn. It is, yeah, man. I think it it's really because is. because we're so secluded now as musicians, we're able to just sit down and post our stuff to the world. Right. So there's no need to like go out and share it with each other. Right. And find more and more like I grew up jamming. My guitar teacher made me jam everything we learned, you right. know. And jamming is like the key to like it, is. it really is the yeah. key to success and that yeah. collaboration. And then you sit down and write a song with someone that you've never met, like music's that universal language. You should be able to do that. Right. But it's being lost. So the ability to say, hey, I'm okay with collaboration. I'm not gonna, you know, confine what I think is great because music doesn't belong to you. 
right. belongs to the world. It belongs right. to the universe. Right. It belongs to everyone. Like if someone else wants to get involved and make it that much stronger, fuck yeah. Yeah. I and mean, that is that's incredible. Yeah. And th- it, yeah. That's <laughs> that's the other thing. Um Martin especially could not take criticism on his on like his parts. He's a guitar player. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, yeah. He's he all could, right. Yeah, he could not but his style was too like chili peppers y and like Oh the chili peppers. Yeah. <laughs> and like the chili peppers, yeah, they're cool, but like we're not the chili peppers and we're not trying to be the chili peppers, but like he just Another had good attitude. He just had that style and he couldn't really understand what we needed out of him. And so it was just like a long process of like trying to work with him and yeah. then eventually giving him the boot. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you mean you had to, you had to walk into it with an open mind. Yeah. So what did it feel like? I mean, you, you made this incredibly, to what most people will say, a crazy choice to yeah. choose the hardest industry on the planet. Yeah. Uh, Mark Cuban even said it. <laughs> um, you make this choice to be, and not not even not even a singer or lead guitar player, which is usually how it starts. Like, oh, I want to go out and you know. But you started as a bass player, yeah. writing what you're calling mediocre level songs, right. and you know, it's in its uh, in it, at where it was in its evolution, and you go out and seek other musicians to try to make it like what where where does where's your mind at like how did you stay so open I, I, with everything i think i've always thought like because when i started seeing honey take off and stuff i'm like and the, the music they're making and i'm just thinking if they can do that i totally can fucking do that myself too like i have the capability i don't know why i'm just thinking if they can do that i can do that like i shouldn't be like yeah incapable of doing i can do anything you know, I should be able to do Fuck anything. Yeah. So like, yeah, that's my that's always been my thing. Like, if they can make a song like that, so could I. How? I fucking don't know, but I'm gonna try. You know, so like. You, so you let your lack of un, your lack of knowledge at that time fuel you. <laughs> yeah. Well, not not, yeah. not not lack no, of knowledge, but just you like, know, like you know, you haven't done it yet. Yeah. And you know, I I think for most, that's that's a scary place to be. Yeah. And you don't seem like you were scared at all. You no. seem like you just wanted whatever came. I wanted way. what they had. And I still do. I want what they have. And, like, I, I, I just want that. I look at the neighborhood. I look at Bad Sons and Honey, everybody that's coming out of Newberry Park. Yeah. And I'm, like, and I'm still, like, if they're coming out of Newberry Park and making this great music, so can I. I want what they have, you know? It's funny. Uh, one of my best friends in the whole world, we were sitting down one night in front of the studio, actually, smoking a bowl of hookah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, having a beer and talking and we're talking about life in general and uh he made a comment he was he's very enraged for whatever subject right. and he said he's like i look at people and say what do they have that i want right and i determine if i really want to waste my time and i've lived my life by that like ever since that moment and so when you said that like yeah. you look at the world or you look at people especially in music you look at them what do they have that i want yeah. if they don't have anything you want yeah. it's like you know it's your up to you and your principles and who you are to decide right. how you react right. but don't waste your time right if there's something you want you need to find out what it is exactly there's yeah. a reason to listen there's a reason to go out there and yeah. it seems like you it seems like almost <laughs> a gift from like the heavens or whatever like you immediately knew like that is what i want yeah and it and it was like this is where it is it was, it was almost laid out in the sense of here's the image here's what it sounds like here's what the possibility is there's no question right now how are you going to get there? exactly yeah so let's talk i mean I mean, I really love that because I, I feel like more people I talk to, that's a scary place, and you, you're so you're so aggressive with it, and I, yeah. I fucking love that. Hell yeah. Um, so in in those moments, you're you you go on Craigslist, you're searching for these guys. I mean, how do you prioritize searching on Craigslist? How do you prioritize making the time to go out and meet these guys? Like, what 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 were what were you doing for a living at the time? Uh, I well, think I was working at Skyworks. In, you're working uh, at Skyworks. Uh, what were your hours? Graveyard shifts from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. 5:24 p.m. to 5:35 a.m. specifically from. <laughs> Monday, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, every other Saturday at the time. So I was just on my phone clicking on each single link, like just every single page that popped up, looking for a bass player, click it, check out the music, no, next one, check out the music, send them an email, No, nothing back. I sent an email to this band called Coast Modern. Well, they just released it. Coast Modern, Coast they're Mo- huge right now. I know, <laughs> I know, they were looking for a bass player. And I heard their song. They put it on SoundCloud. I was like, fuck, let me get in on that. I think I had them on a few of my playlists. <laughs> and I, I I messaged them. But at the time, I had no criteria. I had nothing on oh. under my belt. I, had, I was just starting. I was – this is right before Silver Pup. So, like, 
I had nothing, but I, I messaged them. I sent them a couple YouTube videos, nothing. But I'm just like, that's just the way of the game. So like I'm fucking every single link, I'm clicking on it. And I'm like, that's just how I spent my time. Was just, so your priorities totally changed. Yeah. So yeah. if you weren't working, it was what am I doing in these minutes? Not yeah. even fucking days, but yeah. minutes. Yeah. That's going to change you know, my life while yeah. I'm working towards this. Yeah. How did you stay motivated? How did you stay how, did, how are you able to continue? Dude. I mean, you're working fucking graveyard shifts. Yeah. You gotta be sleeping at some point. Yeah. You know, you're a young dude and girls want you. You got g- girls in your life. You know, you're living at home. Where, like, where, where does this time fall into play? Like, where's the priority? Where's the sacrifice? What, what, where, what were you going through? Um, dude, listening to the bands that I liked at the time, just, just listening to their music and like seeing how they structured their songs and I'm trying to learn how they do it so I can do it myself while I'm writing and like, I'm just listening to the music and I'm still like in my head, I need to do what they're doing and I don't know how to do it, but this is how they're structured their songs. So this is how I'm going to write, or this is how their lyrics are. So this is how I'm going to write. I'm just mimicking everything that they're doing and piece by piece. It's like falling together. And like, do you think you got your own style from that? Yeah. You think it it evolved into something? Yeah. Now it, my style is more, it's weird because Mr. Call is very pop and very like, I mean, your guys' hooks, let me tell you. I, I, Joe, I've never walked away from your show not singing one of your songs. Dude, Joe's hooks are oh, yeah. are amazing, fucking amazing. You guys are fucking on point. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I'm, I just cannot wait to see that stage get bigger for you guys. Dude, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm so saying. pumped. I'm yeah. too pumped. <laughs> Me too, man. Me too. So, I mean, shit, dude. You're you're an animal. Um. So in the in that whole process and that whole giving it your all. There's a sense of pride that has to be dumbed down. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I mean, I'll be totally honest. I have I have trouble in certain areas of music, like dumbing down that and yeah. saying like, you know what, this is okay. You know, because no matter who you are, no matter how good a person you think you are, we all have those moments where yeah. we think we're either too good for something or not good enough right. for something. Right. And in music, because it's vulnerable, because it's sensitive. And to be in your place at that time, you know, not very good at singing, not very good at guitar, just really coming into be- being a bass player and working graveyard shift while living at home. I mean, that's a fucking formula for hate yourself. That's yeah. a formula for self-hate. That's a formula for no pride at all. Right. But at the same time, you still had some sort of pride to wake yourself up in the morning. Yeah. So you found this middle ground. Yeah. I mean, is it was that just natural for you, or was there was there were, were, was there a struggle along along the way? And if there definitely. was, like, what, what, what did you do to, you know, definitely struggle? Yeah, to because, fight that. Because, like, I when I was working at Skyworks and like, while I was searching for people to jam with, and I was writing some stuff, and I would like, like, share it with my coworkers. Dude, they'd make fun of me. <laughs> they would just rip off. You had the balls. Yeah. To, to s- record. Okay, hold on first. What voice record. On your phone. <laughs> voice record. So you're telling me you had the balls to voice record your music <laughs> yeah. on your phone and go to Skyworks, which what do you do there? It was, it's a semiconductor lab company, whatever. We, so obviously nothing to do with music. Nothing and, to do with music at all. And you show these people that probably had no interest, especially in the graveyard shit. Yeah. You had the balls to show them that. Yeah. And, and you I'm, let them laugh I'm at like, you. I'm like, what do you think about this? And like, they would hear me sing on on like the voiceover and like uh they would just like kind of just laugh at me and poke fun at me and i'm like but do you like the song you know what xavier i'm gonna say this right now and i stand by this statement anybody with those kind of balls anybody that stands by what they do as much as you there is literally not an outcome in this world where you don't make it fucking huge there is no outcome where you don't impact the world i appreciate you because holy shit i don't i couldn't do that i couldn't do it i i just like it, that 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 was rough for me honestly that was just like just getting teased like that but like i knew what i had to do still and uh and it's it's really not me it's it's the like the people that i'm working with it's the team yeah and, and that's that's what keeps me going too like it, my team is fucking awesome man like they're they're great so so how did so you you record this stuff you bring it to Skyworks at the time and yeah. you share it with your friends, your coworkers, yeah. you get laughed at. They you. laugh at me, yeah. And how do you walk away from that? Uh, how do you feel? Uh, I feel like I can do better, you know? You feel, you walked away from that motivated to do better. Yeah, I, didn't should be, feel, I should be able to do better, you know? like it's, it's You didn't feel shut down, you didn't feel weakened. Uh, I, I felt a little shut down, like, I thought this was good, but like, and then I have to think, you know, I can't, I know I think it's good, but like, 
there's obviously hits in the radio or there's songs that sound even better than this. This is just nothing. This is just me on a fucking acoustic guitar. I can make something like that. Just getting to that is what I'm trying to learn. So, yeah, that's... Yeah. You, so you, I mean, there's, there seems to be a consistent positive outlook. Yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah. I'm only asking because I'm baffled. I am, <laughs> I am amazed. I am happy to hear this. <laughs> I, I've spent time with musicians, as we all have. I've gotten down to the deep and gritty. I like to dig things out of people. Yeah. Uh, hence why I started this thing. Right. But and often I, more often than not, almost every time, you know, it's other people talk about how. They struggled and they went to a deep, dark hole and they collapsed. There was such a low point in their life. They felt like they were nothing. And it had, they had to go through some sort of like trial and error right. of ch- life changing to get somewhere in music. But you, you just went out. You gave it your all. You got your shit thrown in your face. Like, you're right. I can do better. Watch yeah. me go do better. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Dude, that's, I think about that too. Because like when I first started even like when it was even a thought at like the beginning of Skyworks of like me – and like and bringing to me now like i have a song out called ghost that i've had for years actually and like and it sounds like this and i i never thought i could get it to this point like from a stupid recording from my phone with out of tune guitar and shitty vocals now if you go look at it if you go listen to it on spotify from mr call it's a fucking song like it's a reality and i'm like I'm like so proud of myself, but I'm th- I'm thinking I can do better. I can still do way better than this. I can make a fucking hit, man. I can be like that band, Lovely, the band or whatever, making that song broken. The most, uh, I read a, a comment on Facebook, the, the most annoying song of 2018, but I'm like, yeah, but it's the most annoying because they made a hit. Yeah. <laughs> they made a hit. I can make a hit, man. I can make a hit. I know I can. You ever, you ever read about with anything about Pete Townsend? No. You know the who, Pete Townsend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should read up on Pete Townsend. You should read some biographies on him. I think you and him have more in common than you realize. Really? That, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say anything. I want you to approach okay. it with an open mind. Okay, I will. With a, with a, with a vulnerable mind. Yeah. But you need to read about Pete Townsend. You are right on that same fucking track as that guy. Okay. That guy is still relevant till this day yeah. because of that attitude right there. Cool. You you need I mean fuck that's this is incredible I feel I feel honored to be in your presence <laughs> Dude, with, I, with that <laughs> attitude oh man I'm like riled up now I'm telling you I, like if it wasn't for you <laughs> and these nights I wouldn't be like sitting across from you talking about music at all I would be like probably at home or something with <laughs> my police badge or something <laughs> <laughs> well we gotta fucking keep these nights going hell yeah man I like it yeah me too all right I mean damn so so what what about your friends like I mean you how 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 old were you? You were it's when you first started Skyworks when you really made the decision. I think uh, it was I, like I was. Oh man, it was in. Uh, I think I was twenty four. Twenty four, yeah. yeah. So 24, I'm twenty four right yeah, now. Twenty four, yeah. twenty five, yeah, yeah. So that's that's a big decision because at that point you're not in college, you're not you right. know in right. high school, you don't have a community of friends like you have your friends that stick with you. Right. So when you started music. Um, how did where, how did you how did you work with that? Like, did your friends change no. because your mental state changed? No, I still have, I still have my my closest friends with me. Uh, I still got Adam. He's uh, I look up to him too because yeah. he's just like very motivated. He lives in downtown LA. He was he has like a killer job for living in fucking downtown LA, you know. <laughs> and I look at uh, I look up to him because like, dude, he puts in work. Yeah, and like that's how I want to represent myself as well. Like, I can do the same he can do just in a different area of profession you know he so you were able to see the the good qualities i mean because i mean it's it's really easy to dive into music because it takes i mean almost all your time you have yeah. to commit your life to right. it it's really easy to lose the friends that you do have yeah. that are outside that or yeah. lose i mean relationships even close relationship with your family yeah so you you didn't struggle with that not no not really i've always had like my my close friends with me like adam marcus and jared these these guys and sometimes isaac this uh <laughs> Lots of stories about Isaac. I have but... <laughs> only heard stories about that name. <laughs> and uh, and at my show, like it's it's funny. Uh, me and my uh, my friend Misha, I I always give him a shout out whenever he comes out to my shows because like it doesn't matter how long we go without talking. If like we end up talking for just a short period of time, we just make each other laugh. And like and it, it's just friends like that along the way where like I know I can reach out to like you, I can reach out to and like you'll be there for me. Like that, that one day we went out to sushi and I'm just like, 
this is when we had like when Mr. Call was at an all time low. We had yeah. Lyle, me, and Joe. You just and kicked out your we, drummer. We, yeah, we just kicked out the drummer, and I'm just like, dude, what the fuck? What do I do? All this shit. And you're like, and then I showed you Ghost, and like, fuck that, fuck whatever I said in the sushi. You need to keep doing this, and like, you need to keep doing. It. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like people along the way. I, it's just I feel like the people that I choose to be my friends will be there for me no matter what, just like I will for them. So do you, were there any, was there anybody, I mean, not even necessarily close friends, but just people you would spend time with. Was there anybody you had to cut out of your life? I oh, mean, yeah. we're like, oh, yeah. and if you did, like what, what reasons? I mean, obviously you're focused on music. Yeah. So your time is, you know, a lot of your time and mental, spiritual, whatever, yeah. emotional energy is taken up. Yeah. Uh, what, what was it about those specific people that you had to I, cut out? The one of the, people that came come into mind was actually the only reason I started playing the bass was um, my friend Lorenzo he was like one of my best friends in middle school he actually was uh, was the reason I picked up anything and I told him to teach me to play guitar but then he came around and said no no no, you should play the bass like you'd have more fun or like yeah. I play guitar you play bass and I said all right so I made my mom go buy me a bass like the ne- that weekend and like he was actually a really big influence on me on like just starting out music wise. Yeah. But then like a little bit down the line, he just like any he was just talking shit about me, dude. Like my best friend. Jealous of the success. Was, was but I wasn't even doing anything. It was like we were in high school. I wasn't like just competitive, insecure. Yeah, I, I guess, man. I don't know. Like, I just found out, like, some one of these girls I was talking to, like, would show me, like, what he was saying about me. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> like, how are you going to do this? It's so, so strange. So, you, so there's, I mean, odd... I mean, that's just clearly insecurity. I mean, let's be real. If you're going around talking shit about someone that's doing something for themselves, yeah, like, dude, it, why it, do you care? Yeah, it's, it um, didn't make any sense. I mean... I guess I guess where I'm coming from is I have my own struggles and you seem to have a very good handle on things. So maybe I'm just asking for advice at this point. <laughs> but I mean there's a there's a lot of people that are good people and you yeah. love them. Yeah. But they're just negative. Yeah. They're just they're they're it's not that they're bad. They just have a shitty energy and they're yeah. just shitty this people to be around. Our old drummer, dude. He he was a very good person, I think. He was like I think at heart he's a great person. But the way he projects himself and just like how he's always anxious and just like uh, just kind of angry for whatever reason just jumping on every chance to yeah. be pissed off yeah it yeah. seemed like that like the the last incident that i remember is when he blew up at Lyle my guitarist right before a show for literally a roll of tape like i think i remember the story you yeah, told me about that I was, yeah. yeah like that was like this is what started it all well before that it was like Austin recording us in his studio, but that's, that's its own story. <laughs> um, uh, but the, a roll of tape was like the, the, the thing that just like kicked the bucket, you know, it was just, but see, that's a band member. That's, yeah. you know, that's almost like a business decision. I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, I want to know that I want to get inside the, like the head of someone that, you know, is, is making such a commitment. Cause I mean, I, I have no interest in naming names, but there are people in my life for sure that I love to death, yeah. whether they're friends, even family, yeah. um, that are very close to me and I would never want to get rid of, but they're just, they're just negative. And it's look, you know, everyone goes through different things in the different times yeah. and where they are in their lives doesn't match up where I, with where I'm at in my life. Not right. one is not better than the other, Right. but if I'm going to succeed and continue with what I'm doing, I have to cut those people out. Right. And that is such a hard, I mean, I'm, I'm not good at it yet. Right. I think I'm getting better, <laughs> but did you ever experience that along the way of like, hey, I made this commitment, nothing will stand in my way? Like you get to a, a point where it's like, hey, this person, maybe I only see them once a month, but right. that once a month is enough to hinder what I'm doing. Like, did you ever ever run into anything I, like that? I feel like I do that specifically with the female <laughs> a species in so, my life. So the dating life. The dating life. I do that. I like my... that subject. Let's tackle yeah. this. I oh want to talk God. about that. Oh, I, God. I mean, for those of you listening, I'm so <laughs> hope this doesn't offend you, but Xavier Valdez is a very handsome man. And he, the, so women, the women like him. <laughs> I've, I've, I've had the pleasure of hearing many stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I was just like, uh, uh. And sharing many stories. But, I mean, he is the man. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, talk to me about that. I, um, that's what I do, man. I think... I feel like the dating life for me is, or just a girlfriend, 
or somebody that I would take very seriously is negative in my life. I feel like it's just it's just something I I don't I got to make music. I can't let that be an intrusion. And I know it's 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 very like irrational because no that's called rock and roll you don't ever lose that attitude <laughs> it's irrational my whole band has they have girls and like they're all happy and like they make time and but me i just like i'm so focused on this specific thing that i don't want to put any time or energy in like serious dating dude you gotta fucking read pete townsend oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, yeah, you are. I'm, you are. I'll like, talk to you after this. I, I swear I, to God, <laughs> you are like describing to me the beginning stages of a great rock star. Like, like thirty, forty fucking years from now. Like, let's sit down and have the same. Yeah, we'll have the same. Talk to me about what it took, and you're gonna tell me the same fucking shit. I guarantee it. I, I hope so. I hope I'm I'm playing where I want to play. You know. Oh, there's no hope. That's that's happening. There's no fucking doubt. Uh, that's yeah. Yeah. So so you think? Um, what about? I mean, just I mean, just let's talk about. I mean, just sex. Yeah. Like you're just hooking up with girls yeah. and uh and that's just enough to get by. You don't you don't you don't think you're missing out on an emotional connection on uh, no, a deeper I level. No, I definitely I definitely am. Do you think that affects your music? Yeah. Do you think you could be writing better music or just different music? I think I don't know. That's that's interesting because when I wrote Salem, it was about someone, you know? And that was a time in my life where I thought I could do anything for some someone. Like You were in love. I was in love i i said i was in love i don't know other people's perspective of me and that story that doesn't fucking matter that if doesn't you, matter if you're true right. only right. you can tell me if That's, you were in love or yeah not. i feel like i was in love and like i felt so much emotion for this person and like i was it was just like kept me up like at night and it kept me just like on my mind constantly like what is she doing? Like, uh, let me let me reach out to her. Like, no, I'm not going to talk to her today. No, no. You're and then playing like games with yourself yeah. before you played them with her. <laughs> yeah, and then like Jesus, an, an hour later, I'm texting, "Hey, what's up? Like, what are you doing?" And like, I was I want to go right before I want to go see her in Oregon. I'm like having a writing session with Joe, and I'm like, "Dude, this girl," and blah blah blah. And Joe's just like, "Yeah, that's a bad idea." <laughs> and, and I'm like, "Well, what do you mean?" He's just like, "Everything about her sounds." fucking crazy like in joe's voice and i'm like uh, <laughs> in joe's voice. uh and he's just like yeah so like we're writing this song we're writing salem and like we're trying to think of a hook and he's just like writing stuff down he's like all right don't get offended by this but <laughs> and he shows me the lyrics and i'm like okay i'm like what about salem and he starts singing it to me back and i'm like God damn it, that's good. <laughs> damn it, record it. Do it. Okay, just so use it, me. It, what, 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 what was Salem about? Like, was it just about her? Or was specifically? It's like... about me. Like, the song is about me, but like talking to this person. Like, okay, you get me, and like saying what you would actually, you saying what you really want to say. Yeah, saying Isn't what that I a really beautiful want... part of music. I know, man. You can fucking say like, anything. This is how I am. I'm a shitty person, and usually I just like take in and and, and whatever and do whatever with someone. But for some reason, you got me up at night and I'm like so into you and I can't change this for whatever reason. And now like I'm doing all these things I would never fucking do. So, so do you think that experience turned you off from dating or I, do you just – it's just not something I'm, you care about? It's just not something I really care about. I'm just sort of a little bit more aware of like, yo, don't – waste that kind of money or time again. <laughs> so so if, if a girl walked into your life right now and she was, you know, well balanced in your life for the, for lack of I, a better phrase, I, would you continue to go for it? I feel like I'm a little bit more open now of like, okay, I'd rather take, cause with Salem girl, I took things very fast. Everything was fast paced, fast paced. This you and got like, that. You're such a musician. Yeah. You're such a fucking musician. You get the little taste of some yeah, sort of emotion and passion, I, I and you're know. like, let's fucking turn this into a goddamn world changing yeah. machine. Yeah. And now, oh, I'm I like, love that. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'd rather be with someone now that I've known, who gets me, and like can understand, like can understand me, and like can make me laugh, and like I can make them laugh, and understand that, like, you know what? Sometimes I'm a shitty person. So like you got you gotta you gotta bear with me and like I'm still learning I'm still learning I'm I'm not good at relationships, so so here's a question yeah say this girl comes around okay um would you want her to be very involved not in like say so but 
ask about your music every day, care about your music, or would you rather have her outside of that world and just love you and be with Xavier, the not musician? I would like her to be a part of the music with me, honestly. What does that What does that entail? I'm just curious. Like, lyrics wise, or or melody wise. You or, want her writing with you? I just want to know like what they would do differently. Cause like I take a lot of people's opinions with like things like just so you want you so you you want someone on the fucking action boat with you yeah you just, want someone hopping on I want to sh- share this the whatever I have whatever idea I have because dude a lot of times like fuck this isn't good so like yeah I want to sh- like l- help me make this good I want to work with so, like so someone. you you really want a, a partner at all. yeah yeah I, I like that don't lose that I, I, don't but lose like that. at the same time I'm like no fuck that no. <laughs> No, you can't. <laughs> well, it's a little different when you start to get intimate and involved like that. You know, you open up a different side of yourself that you've only ever opened up to music. Right. And when those two sides meet, one can rip the other one apart. Yeah. Don't ever forget that music was your first love. That's true. And will that's, always be that's your very first true. love. And I'll always have that. She is the muse. <laughs> what is the root word of music? Muse. All right. That is. <laughs> there's not a lot of sense in that, but make sense of it. Yes. Yeah, so um, as far as that's like, interesting. I like that. I mean, I'm 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 happy to hear you say that confidently too. Yeah. Because. I mean, in my life as a musician, I've had such a, I've had such trouble uh, sharing it mm-hmm. with the with the significant other. As much as I do want it, I think my issue is I need to see them come to me and say, "Hey, I want to be a part of this. I don't want to write. I don't want that, but I right. want. I know this is what you do. I want to yeah. be part. Of it. I want to. I want to. When you write a new song, I want to hear it. Right. When you come up with a new lyric, I want you to text it to me. Yeah. You know, and like not that they're the all saying person, but right. like having that partner in it all, like. I think that's a that's a very important it's thing as musicians. Beneficial. To it's very beneficial. I think that's really really powerful. Yeah. I think that's really powerful. Yeah. I like that. I like cool. that you said that. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Well, shit. So you're so you're on the you're on the straight fucking path. I am. Damn I'm, man, I'm I like trying, it. You're man. you're an animal. You are an animal. <laughs> I, I am like you know I've known you for a lot of years and I've gotten the pleasure of hanging out and talking about stuff, but I haven't really gotten this deep with you on these subjects. And yeah. I'm just realizing more and more like this is why I'm so like you know attracted to like hanging out with this guy and staying friends with this guy. This guy's fucking power. <laughs> this guy's rock and roll. Dude, it takes it takes one to know another. You know, like, <laughs> dude. So you have all these incredible qualities. You have all these incredible motivations. All these incredible just everything. Why are you not the front man? Other than the fact that you can't sing, why don't you want to be the front man? Um, I've thought about it, like maybe if I got lessons or whatever, or blah blah blah. But honestly, man, like I feel like I'm a much better, I'm a more powerful second hand person, like a uh, a number two. Okay. I think I'm a more powerful number two than I am number one. What does number two mean, though? What does that job entail? Um, dude, just like to you at least. To me. It's like writing whatever I can write and presenting it to someone who knows, who has the knowledge of of making it happen better than I can do. So, but also working together with me. So, yeah. uh, like with in Mr. Call, when me and Joe write together, it's actually, it works out really well because I have all these ideas and all these fucking things that don't make sense. And, and he can bring them to life. Yeah, yeah. And Joe can like, okay, I like that or no, I hate that or blah, blah, blah. And like, it's all, it's always a back and forth thing. And I have all, the, I always say stupid shit. And like, he like kind of just reels you in. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's like, like the Dr. Frankenstein to your Frankenstein right, music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I, I feel like it works better for me like that. I'd rather have that than a, I, I like I release my own stuff on on SoundCloud, which is like bullshit. Whatever, I just do it for fun. So you're not afraid of the spotlight. No, no. I just I just would rather be in a, in a group where I'm a supporting. person. I think what I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong. I think what I'm hearing is you believe in what you're doing so much that if there's a possibility of it being better than how you do it, you want that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. For the love of God. Absolutely. You go home tonight, yeah. go on Amazon, and buy every book on Pete Townsend. For the Pete love Townsend. of God. I'm going to text you. Oh, my. I'm going to text you. Dude, that, I, like, I like that. That's, that's incredible because I, I, uh, I, was, I was a little nervous to ask the question. I didn't want to hear you were afraid of spotlight because everything you told me, that's, I would slap you across the <laughs> fucking face if you said that shit. <laughs> no, I mean, it, even, you know, even on stage, Joe, I don't, think, I don't think anyone else could – I mean, not anyone else, but I, I think it would be very difficult to find someone else that could balance you. Yeah. Because on stage, you, you, even if you stood there still, and I've seen you, you have an incredibly powerful energy on stage. 
Thank you, you you can tell that you are holding the band down. You can tell that you, you know, maybe you're writing these songs or you you can tell what you can, but there's definitely a, a very intense, powerful energy coming off of you. Joe is incredible yeah. at taking that and giving it to us. Yeah. The man is a genius. Yeah. And I, I'm so happy to hear that you guys have that writing relationship. I know. I mean, I, I it's one thing to be a front man, but to collaborate like that. Dude, so, so you do most of the writing then? Uh, me and Joe, actually, with on Wednesday, you heard a new song. Um, I think it was third song in. We don't really have a name for it. it, it I remember it. Yeah, yeah. I remember it. Lyle wrote that one. Really? Yeah. A lot of guitars in it. Is yeah. that the one I'm thinking of? I, it's a, it's a very like, I say it's it's like um like a Billy Idol like dark pop kind Fuck of thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but dude, actually, Lyle is so good at just coming up with like Lyle's a fucking pro. He used to tour. He he used to write for this singer songwriter chick. Um, but like. Lyle is so good at just like making what we want for <laughs> what we need at the time. Yeah. It might take him like maybe 0.5 seconds and then he's like, all right, I got it. And like, I'm it's just there. Like, yeah, it's there. I'm just what like, pro. I could never do what Lyle does. I, I can say that confidently. Like there's no way. machine. He's a machine. He's a machine. Yeah. Well, you guys, I mean, you guys all, it's, it's becoming pretty clear. Like you guys as roles. Yeah. So, so you, I guess you come up with the initial ideas of the songs, the chord progressions, yeah. maybe the or, melody. Or I, mean. I think, no, now it's been, I have lyrics. I have a book of lyrics at home that Joe gave me a book and he said, you know, just write whatever on here and, and we're going to collaborate at this time or whatever time. And like, all I've been doing is just writing shitty poems that Joe can turn into like <laughs> really good songs. I'm, I'm loving this, man. I'm, I, I love to hear that a whole band is cooperating and being a part of the writing process. Yeah. Because often that's really not the case a lot of the time. Yeah. It's really not the case yeah. a lot of times. And I think that just makes you better musicians. I think that makes you better uh, performers, makes you better everything because everyone has their piece in it. So there's almost like a care for it, a different type of care for it. It's one thing if you know your bandmate brings a song and says, hey, this is my song, play it. Right. It's another thing to say, hey, I have an idea, let's all make this happen. So when yeah. you go up and you perform it, whether you're recording it or on stage, there's a passion and a, and a drive and, and a care, a yeah. real care that you know even as an audience member you can feel. Dude, that's and that's the kind of unit, that power that, that emits an entire stage. It's funny that you say world. that too because like Tyler – our drummer, he's like, he has, like, the the drive that I see in him now is like, what I like I saw, at, like when I first started thinking about forming a band. Yeah. And that kind of kicked everybody's in the uh, kicked everybody in the ass, and they're just like, we got to get on Tyler's level because like, he's on it's a, like that he, raw. Yeah, fucking, he's on a different I'll level, do man. Anything for this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, yes, yes, I got. I'm looking at Tyler. I'm like, that's what I want too. I want to be exactly what he's doing like so motivated like that yeah and he's like he doesn't give a fuck and he's not stopping and i'm like yes i'm on your team <laughs> <laughs> i'm on your team i like that <laughs> team this band <laughs> <laughs> okay so i mean damn this is incredible this is such great insight on the band yeah i think this is more importantly this is great insight on what it takes to yeah. make a band a band that'll last yeah um today it's so difficult and i had this conversation uh, a little bit with charlie and i have i've had this conversation with a lot of people and I've struggled with this topic itself, but forming a band, a successful band, a committed band, yeah. a band that's going to show up and make things happen. And it seems like the four of you have committed more than what is expected to make right. a successful band. And that's really exciting. That's just really, really exciting because it it's so fucking rare, man. Yeah. It's so fucking rare. Like, the, yeah, there's a lot of indie bands. There's not a lot of other genres that have bands. Yeah. There's a lot of these like new bands coming up, but they don't, they don't last so long. It's true. That's and they're, true. they're not la they're not standing the test of time. And I think it's because only one of them or even two of them are really having that care. Right. It seems like you guys have found a way that all of you can care as deep. That's that's funny that you mentioned that there's this band called or there was this band called Magic Man. They wrote a hit called Paris and then like once like that album had come out and that song had come out or whatever, the two guys, the singer and the guitarist like got abandoned from their keyboardist, their drummer and their bass player. And then like they're having tryouts and stuff. And it's funny cause our, our old drummer's girlfriend at the time, she tried out for the band. And when she went to go try out, they're like, yeah, we write all the songs, but this is how you're going to play the the music. And she just like, wasn't about it. So like she was looking for an actual band, not like a, you that's, command me. That's a good, 
you do you know the story of Metallica when they fired their bass player after Saint Anger and everything like that? So Ma- oh yeah. So Metallica, so they they fired uh, Jason he, Newstead. He was, he was in the fusion kind of. Yeah, like, he, well, he afterwards yeah, he, they fired yeah. Jason Newstead and they had to record Saint Anger. And James yeah. Hetfield went to the went to rehab and you know the Eagles right. were out of the root. You know, it's a great documentary, some kind of monster. It's all about that. It's about you know it walks through the whole process. It's a really incredible thing to watch. Yeah. As a band, you guys should sit down because Metallica that documentary they really represent what it takes is the stuff you watch them go through yeah. any band would break up over right and they stuck through right. and they fought through right. by the end of it they're looking for a new bass player they're actually um bob rock i think was the guy's name or something like that uh he was, was he a, a producer he was a producer yeah. and he recorded basses on that based on that album oh did he really yeah it was it was not you know what i'm i have a metallica tattoo on my back i'm a diehard metallica fan oh yeah that wasn't their best work <laughs> <laughs> um but they show the bass tryouts I saw a clip on that. So yeah. they have yeah. all these famous cats coming in and Les out. Les Claypool like, came out. Dude, they had everybody come <laughs> everybody in. Everybody came out. And here comes Rob Trujillo. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And I he saw showed, that. But it, it's great how they show up because he didn't show up with his own basses. He showed up and they're like, oh, take a bass. He's like, oh, whichever one works. He was super chill. He showed up. And not only did he fucking kill it. Dude, And, and I he saw. impressed the fucking band. I, mean, these I are saw. The guy, this is fucking Metallica, man. Yeah. He impresses them. But the best scene in that movie is when they sit him down at the table and the, I think it was either Lars or James. They they look at him and say like, "Hey man, we want you in Metallica, but we don't want you just in Metallica. You're a part of the band. Yeah. You'll get twenty five percent of everything. We're gonna hand you a million dollars right now to go get your affairs in order because now you're a solid member of the band." Yeah. And they did. They basically said, "We're not looking for someone to play our songs with us. Right. We're looking for someone to be this right. band. Right. You represent Metallica. Yeah. You're writing. You're bringing it to the table. You're doing all your shit." And he writes with them. Yeah. And like I think that attitude. You know, amidst all the problems that they show in that movie, all the struggles that they went through, amidst all that, when they sat down to talk about the band, the unit, the reason, they said, if you're coming in, you're being a part of this. It's bigger than us. Right. It's not just, hey, James right. Hatfield writes the songs right. and you guys play. Right. I mean, James Hatfield write pretty much most of the stuff, but like, you know, James writes the stuff, uh, Lars arranges the stuff and helps him compose it. You know, Rob writes the fucking bass lines and puts his, you know, stuff in. Kirk writes these ripping solos. Like, there's, yeah. there's a unit that works. And without that, I don't think you last. Right. Right. And that was such a beautiful. I think that's that's an education. That scene is a music music education, and it sounds like you guys have really honed that in early on. Yeah, I think so too. And I mean, I like I you just so said, too. it's 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 a, it's incredible that you know you can write all the music, but if you don't let anyone else in, you're gonna end up alone. Right. It's like fucking real life. Yeah. It's yeah. like you need yeah, to make exactly. something bigger than yourself. Yeah. You need to allow other people to be you gotta, there. You gotta humble yourself, really. That's awesome. Yeah. I I love hearing that, man. This is this is so so good. So. So for the sake of honing it all in, yeah. you know, this I you know I'm, I'm calling it the music change. You know, I thought about you. I was like, what do I want to talk to Xavier yeah. about? I'm calling this the music change. The, what part of life changed? All the different changes that you had to make, all the changes that happened yeah. to make music work. What about balance? You're at a point where you're playing shows consistently. You guys yeah. are recording. Right. You're trying to promote as much as you can. Right. You don't have a high budget because right. you're not a band, you know, touring and making right. tons of money. Yeah. We don't have a label behind. And us, you know, right? you, none yeah. of none of you are millionaires. Right. Like it's 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 a it's a struggle. So it yeah. requires even more time. Yeah. What's your balance in life? And before that, what are you trying to balance? What matters? I think the patience. I'm trying to balance like the time in between where we don't see each other. Or where we're not like working, but we, you know, theoretically should always be working on something. Um, but like sometimes there are gaps where like we just don't have uh, shows, uh, a show lined up or something, or we're just not always busy. Yeah. For me, I'd say because I don't have a serious girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, that's that's a really good point. <laughs> I I I actually lately have been just writing in my room just like making beats and making songs like like i thought like no matter what i'm always just going to be making music whether it just sounds like this little bullshit thing it's just going to make me happy i know it's going to make me happy because it's going to be like something that i created but like it's just like i'm just writing whatever and i'm throwing out there i don't give a fuck like i just like like how i used to send voice recordings to or show voice recordings to people at Skyworks, same thing, man. I'm just writing whatever, and I'm putting it out there. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, then it's all right, too. It's <laughs> so, I mean, I love that. I love that. I think I think uh, there's a lot of selfishness in that, yeah. but the right kind. 
I think it's a matter of waking up and saying, hey, you know, I could die today. Yeah. Hey, I don't know what the reason of life is. I don't, you know, whatever it is, I don't actually know physical proof, but I do know picking up this instrument. I do know feeling these things yeah. makes me feel powerful, makes yeah. me feel worthy, makes me feel like something, like this is meaning. And I think that takes a lot of care for yourself. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess what I'm hearing is caring for yourself is a lot of the balance. Yeah. And in those down times, like obviously when things are happening, it's easy to be excited. It's right. easy to stay focused because right. you have a lot going on. But, you know, in between when you're, you say you're not playing shows, say you guys don't have a new song you're working on, say you're just fiddling around on the guitar or the bass and you know, you have work to, you know, do you, are you working right now? Or so? Yeah. Yeah. I work Monday through Friday from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, I started working construction. It's the biggest eye opener of my fucking life, dude. It's like, oh my God, my partner actually hated me for the first two months and he gave me like an ultimatum. Like we we're at a job one day and he's like, all right, dude, I'm fucking done with you. You're fucking out of here in 30, 30 days unless you can fucking change. Like just, just start yelling at me and I'm just like, <laughs> like, cause I wasn't picking it up yeah. and it like, maybe I, maybe I didn't give a shit in the beginning. But like now it's 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 way different. Like, like how do you turn that off? Uh, dude, how do you walk away from how do you walk away from feeling one? It, I'm sure you made you feel inadequate. Oh yeah, you feel like oh, a loser. Oh yeah, you felt like a nobody. Yeah, you know we've all been in those moments. At least I hope we've all been. Those yeah. are good moments to be yeah. in. Yeah. Um, how do you walk away from that in the middle of the fucking two p.m.? How do you walk away from that in the middle of the day, and say, already shit tired, and say I'm gonna go fucking be vulnerable? I'm gonna go be yeah. sensitive. I'm gonna go create. I'm gonna fight for what I believe in. How do you do that? I, the same thing i think uh when he yelled at me that certain day like i went home and i'm like fuck dude like do i really want this job but and then i'm thinking wait dude i can prove to myself i know i can ha i know i have it in me i can do better like i can always do better i can always improve cuz like if i fail then i fail myself and i never want to be a failure to myself because i know like it's just time it's just reps it's just practice and it's just like I can do it. I know I can. And so that's all it took for me. And like maybe like conversations with, with venting to some friends and the, and then they're kind of like reassuring me like, Hey dude, like, you know, you can, you'll, you'll learn blah, blah, blah. You'll learn. Yeah. And it's just like that, that helps a little bit, but it's, it's, it's all has to come from me. So like that, I guess. So yeah, so you're able to, I mean, you're able to, because I, I don't know if turning off is the right, is the right term. Like, a lot of people say, hey, turn off the work mode, turn on the music mode. Right. You know, there's different modes, but it doesn't seem like that's the case for you. It I, seems like no matter what you do, you want to be better at it. Yeah. And you just happen to love one more than the other. Right, right. That's incredible. Music, though. Yeah, gotta, no, I, that's what I mean. Like, I got to make music, though. <laughs> that's, I mean, because yeah. it's so hard to find the balance. Yeah. And for you, it's like, from I guess what I'm hearing is that it's not you're not worried about a balance. You're, you're just who you are no matter what you do. You just... Yeah feel more in certain areas right man that's incredible i look up to you after Dude, this no, no, i look I up to you <laughs> There's a, you know what i think anybody listening to this if they're a mus musician or not at any level if they're a successful musician playing tours and stadiums if they're just picking up a fucking instrument or thinking something or if they're not a musician and they're just trying anything in life i think anybody that listens to all the things you said will learn and they should hold that close to heart yeah because i am incredibly inspired i'm incredibly motivated Thank you. this yeah. has been this has been an honor to fucking talk to you, man. Thanks, man. This Thanks, has been man. incredible. It's, it's been really I am, fun. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. <laughs> I'm I'm actually very happy and grateful that you uh, invited me on this. Like you just like came up to me like, "Hey, I'm doing a podcast. I want you on there." Yes, immediately. I was like, "Yes, I'm there. I'm fucking there. Hell yeah!" <laughs> I couldn't say no. I'm I'm so happy we did this one on one too, and I'm I'm excited to have you on with the band. Yeah, man. dude. I think in yeah. a few weeks, like yeah. one or two weeks, Let's we're gonna do it, have dude. First week of February or something like that, or Let's whatever it. day it is. But I'm excited to talk to all you guys. Yeah, this yeah. will be fun. I know, man. Dude, this has been great. They're just gonna all rip on me. You're, you're gonna. Oh, I can't it. wait. I'm gonna join <laughs> in, dude. I'm gonna join in. Come on. How can we not rip on you? You're you're the, you're the biggest man ever. Like, we got it. We got to throw punches at you. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> you're the foundation of it all. Well, I don't know, man. Any anything else you want to share with me? With any anything you want to say? Um, nah. Just for both of us, I'd say like we can make a difference. Uh, not only within ourselves, but like, I think we have what it takes to, to be what we want to be. And like, I think you and I have an obligation to like prove not just to ourselves, but like we have an obligation to share things that are in our head 
and like present it to the world and just and it's going to come from the form of music and it's just going to like that that is our obligation and no matter what it takes we have to do it cuz like we're musicians dude we just have to do it you know it's just i don't know what it is but like we're going to do it no matter what so that's I, we got what it takes man and I, i'm happy to be sitting one on one with you it's just like it's 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 real good uh wow that was you, that was that was incredible <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna have that on repeat every morning. <laughs> Want to wake up every day and put fucking Xavier's talk on. That was that was amazing. Well, for those of you listening, look up Mr. Call so you can hear Xavier and his awesome band. And I look forward to having you guys all together Me on too, here. Man. Me too. Rock and roll, man. Thank Rock you. Rock and roll. Hell yeah. Peace out.